Hey everybody, this is Hugh. I'm um, going to walk you through paginating your manuscript from a Word document all the way to a final PDF ready for upload to CreateSpace or Lightning Source or the printer of your choice. I've had numerous requests to do this. I um, uh, think the best way maybe is just to do a screen cap of the process, show you a few paragraph, a few chap chapters, and then you can extrapolate from there and and do the rest of the document yourself. I'm also gonna make these two template files available um, uh, on, the, on my blog, so uh, I think they're pretty useful. One's a five by eight trim size, which is the smallest CreateSpace does right now. The other's a six by nine, which is a standard trade paperback size. Um, I prefer the smaller size. Uh, if you wanna see a video of what this uh, book looks like at the end, I'll have, I'll have that at the blog as well. Um, so I'm going to open up, I'm going to start by opening up this template file, this 5x8. Um, uh, so this is InDesign, and I think it's a program worth having as a writer. Just, I know it's expensive, but uh, it's an investment in, in your profession, just like uh, artists and photographers really need a copy of Photoshop. It's, uh, it's expensive for them too, but um, I think this is a very useful program to have, and I think doing your own layout can be very nice. Uh, I'm going to show you how to use my template file, and you can use it just as a basic um, uh, start to get a, a professional-looking print book out there. But if you want to start uh, getting creative with your with this template file and, and make your own kind of layout, I think it really um, makes it the book that you want it to be and presents your story to the reader the way that you want. Uh, it's nice to have that kind of control. So the very first thing I'm going to do is before I get started doing anything is go to file and save as and I'm gonna I don't wanna I don't wanna work in my template file and accidentally overwrite it. So I'm gonna save this as the name of my book. And now you'll see up here I'm no longer in the template file. That's still on my hard drive. Now I'm working on the shell collector. Okay, so little bit of a layout. Um, don't get overwhelmed with all these buttons. You're not going to use most of them. It's just a handful of things here that you're going to need. Um, so the one of the more important one is this pages. This is for navigating in the document. You'll see I have six pages in this document. Um, and I'll show you why that is in a second. Before we look at the pages in the document, I want you to uh, come up here to these master pages. Um, these are pages that don't actually show up anywhere in the document. They're the templates for new pages inside your document. So when you create a new page, it's going to follow this template. These are your page numbers down here. This is There's a bit of code in here that just tells it this is a page number. Um, and this these will show up, the author will show up on any left-facing page, which is over here, and title will show up on any right-facing page. So what you do is double click this and put in your name and now it's going to show up on every page. Same with the title. And you don't have to put your name and title here if you want. If you want to put title and then the name of the chapter or the name of the, the, um, the overall series that you're writing in, you can do whatever you want up there. What's important is that it's going to reflect throughout the entire uh, book. So. That's your master pages. That's really all you need to do here. If you if you want if you like your page numbers to be in the corners, you can drag them right here, and you'll see how it, it it snaps to different alignments. It wants to line up with other existing things, and you'll see also there's green lines that run across. Make sure they're lined up from one side of the page to the other. So very useful uh, the way InDesign helps you lay things out so they're not haphazard. So that's all I'm going to do in there. Just get that set up, and you'll see how um, you have to go back into Pages to get down in here. But you'll see how that put the shell collector right here and the page numbers right there. I can't edit these. I can't click here and change that. I can't even select it to delete it. I'll show you how to do that later. But it's important to be able to make that change in one place so it reflects through your entire document. So. Here's what we have on the first page. If you want to use this, you can. You can also delete this. Um, I like having a splash page or a frontispiece page or title page 
it's a nice place to sign these. It's a nice thing to greet the reader with when they open it up. Um, if you don't have a you know subtitle, you can just you can really delete anything in here you want, and you can change this around. Change I would use a different font if this was a, a horror story or a post-apocalyptic or science fiction novel. Um, you know, it's it's as easy as any word processor. You just go up here and play with all the different fonts. Um, this is the page that makes it look like a book. Um, I use the same general information throughout here. And, and again, this is just um, plug and play. It's, uh, it's like a game of, of Mad Libs here. And you don't, I'm not going to go through and do all of this. Um, but you can get the idea of the things that you want to change. Make sure you add your ISBN 13 and 10 here. Um, one thing I, I really like doing is make, you know, giving credit to everyone who helps make this possible. MS Corley did the cover on this. Uh, David Gatewood did the editing. Um, you can give yourself props for doing the interior. Here's put your URL your email if you want, your Twitter account, um, who you're dedicating this to. All right, now we get into um, the actual paginating. So that's just some stuff. stuff. Oh, see this little asterisk here to the left of the name up in this tab? That means that you have changes that are not yet saved. Um, control S a lot. So I just hit Control S and that asterisk went away. Now I know that my document is saved. Um, I, I don't know if it's just my paranoia, but I recommend doing that often. You do a bunch of changes, hit Control S in case you have a power outage, it, it happens. Um, so here's where I'm gonna do the, the actual fun bit. I'm going to take all of the text in my manuscript. This is my final uh, manuscript for the shell collector. I'm gonna copy every bit of text in here. So I'm gonna Control A that selects it all, and then control C copies it to my clipboard. Now back in InDesign, I'm going to highlight this first sentence. You can triple click it. You can drag the whole thing, whatever you want to do. Control V, as in Victor, will paste every bit of text in this document. And you'll notice uh, it doesn't show up anywhere. Well, I pasted it into this panel. So the entire um, book exists in this one panel and you can see this red plus here shows you, hey, there's, um, there's more text that can fit in here. So this is why I have uh, these two pages. What, this, what InDesign wants you to do is show it where you want to flow the text from this panel to what panel. You can flow it over here, you can flow it anywhere. So I'm gonna click this red plus, and, you can, and if, if you can't um, figure out, sometimes it's you know getting this black cursor so you can select things, it's over here. If hitting escape doesn't get you to it, you can click here to get that cursor. You might be, you might have just edited something in your, and you've got this guy, and you, this is for highlighting text. You can't choose that X with that. You need to go up and grab this black um, uh, cursor. So I'm gonna click that plus, and you'll see, now I've, I'm, I have all that text. It's even showing me the contents of what's in there. I have all that text, and I can tell it to go anywhere I want. Of course, I want it to go on this next page. Now, if I were to click here, it would flow this text in, but then I would just have to do it over and over again. Well, there's a shortcut by holding down the Shift key, and when I hit the Shift key, you'll see the, the symbol of text right to the bottom right of that cursor. Um, changes from lines of text to this uh, curvy arrow. That's, your, that's showing that it's gonna auto flow the text. And we also wanna make sure when we click in here that it, it starts the text at this top left corner. And if I, if I were to click here, the text would start flowing from the middle of this panel. And you can see, you don't have to line this up exactly. When I get close, the cursor goes from black to white. And that's just saying, um, okay, I, I know that you're you're going to put it in this corner. I recognize that now. So as long as you're holding down the shift key and as long as that cursor is uh, blank, then it's going to um, 
pin it, pin the text correctly. I'm going to hit left click while holding down the shift key and you're going to see this auto flow box come up. And it's basically what it just did is it kept creating panels based on our master page. It kept creating pages and flowing the text just like we showed it to. So now if I go to pages here, instead of six pages, I now have 346 pages. All right. Now you'll see there's some duplicate stuff here because I've got separate pages for my title. Um, so I can delete this and just drag over and delete it. Uh, and I've already got, you know, that somewhere else. So what I want is um, to get the first bit of this text up here where it's going to be used. Uh, if, you can, if you have anything like this, if you have quotes or anything, you can control X. We'll paste and delete it at the same time and then control V. Let's put it over here. Control X, control V. And change this to something. Oops. If you grab too much of that, it'll uh, default to the um, normal text. So you only want to grab the, uh, the letters in, in order to overtype it. Okay, so right here is where I want my text to end up. I'm just going to sit right there and hit the delete key until uh, this is deleting blank lines of space until I get um, right here. All right, so now I've got my um, book in here and it's you can see some of the formatting is left over from Microsoft Word, you know, that this is centered. You can see it's got this extra space between paragraphs and it's a, san, it's a sans serif font. These are all things that I don't want. Uh, I want this to look like a print book. And for print books, I think a serif font looks better. Um, you know, you can, um, you can, you can, I'll show you how to change this to a different font if you want. But first thing I want to do is I want to make this look like I like my uh, print books to like. And to do that, I've got these saved styles here, things I've used in the past, paragraph styles. So instead of having to change all of this, um, you know, one chapter at a time or one paragraph at a time, I'm gonna select this entire bit of text I just pasted in here. I'm gonna change it all at once. So I'm gonna make sure I have my cursor to the left of this word, my, the very first word in the book. I'm gonna have my cursor to the left of that. I'm gonna go up to pages this is how you navigate the document very quickly. And I'm gonna to go to the very last page with text on it. And I'm gonna hold down the shift key because my cursor is still up there by that word my. I'm gonna hold down the shift key and click to the right of my very last bit of text. And now this has selected the entire document just like we did in Word. The reason I didn't do control A is because that would have selected um, you know, the dedication and the other things that I've already formatted. So this has all this text selected. And what I want to do is change every bit of this text to the Georgia font. And I want to change the size to 9.5. I think that's a good, good size for an eight by five work of fiction. So I'm going to enter 9.5 in here. This is text size. You see there's two different sizes of this T. 9.5, I'm going to hit tab and that's going to affect that change. I'm also going to drop this down from, this is the, the letting, this is the amount of space between the lines. I'm going to drop that down to 15 points. And you can play around with all that and, and see uh, which one you like. Now, so what that did is that got me the font that I wanted and it, and it got the size, which is why there's some blank pages down here because I made the size smaller. So I'm, we're going to delete these pages later. Now, I still have this space between these paragraphs, which I do not want. So while this is all still highlighted, I'm gonna to go to paragraph styles and I'm gonna click normal. And this is um, my preferred settings for my paragraph style. Um, uh, with respect to 15, you can change um, what, so once you download this template, you can make it your template. Um, you can go into paragraph styles and right click on normal and go to edit and you can make it Go to basic character formats and you can make it um, whatever font you want for your normal font, whatever size. Um, 
I like uh, you know these settings so um, for my books but they don't have to be yours and there's a lot you can go through here I'll show you some of this other stuff in a bit but most of it you don't need most most of everything you need is in the basic uh, in the advanced I'm gonna hit OK and you'll see that the space between the paragraphs is now gone you might not have had those spaces in your document but you, you're gonna have some weird stuff and so it's good to um, highlight everything and make sure that it's now part of this normal paragraph style and you can tell what style a paragraph is by if you click in that paragraph it will highlight here what uh, style that paragraph is uh, assigned to so right now everything is assigned to normal that's a good way to start so all we've done so far is we've just pasted in all of our text from our manuscript uh, highlighted it all changed the font and the size and then made sure it's all set to uh, normal now really this is this looks like a book now I mean it's there's a lot of problems with this but you know you've got your basic um, structure in place um, the next thing I want to do is make sure all my paragraph uh, or my chapter starts look look correct this is the, the style that I'm going to go with with this book um, so if I go down to the next uh, chapter you'll see well this I've, I've made everything Georgia 9.5 so nothing looks quite right for these um, special features well all it takes to make this look um, the same throughout the book is just make sure that I have my line my font uh, my cursor anywhere on this line and go to paragraph styles and click the one that says chapter number and that again this all this does is makes it an imprint empty shadow at 39 or 29 points big if, I, if you want to change that right click and edit chapter number and you can make this whatever you want I'm gonna put in three character returns and I'm gonna put an extra character return here and then I like uh, using a drop cap I think this makes it look nice and fancy uh, all you have to do is make sure your cursor is in this paragraph anywhere in this paragraph and click this drop cap paragraph style now all this does by um, going from normal to drop cap the main change that this is making is right up here the you have this the size of the drop cap how many lines you want it to take up so if I move this down you can see the T only takes up two lines or takes up four and this is very important because this controls how many letters are affected by the drop cap. So you can make this the entire word. I, I, I prefer this look. So that's what this paragraph style is doing, this drop cap style, is it's automating some of these options. Uh, there's no first line indent. Um, doing all that manually would just be a pain. Um, using paragraph styles, it's as easy as going through your document you know just like we change this by clicking chapter number we click here and click drop cap you'll do this for every um, chapter in your manuscript and very quickly you're gonna have something that looks like a beautiful print book over here if you've got um, you know some text to lead into your sections you've got the section title here um, if you want uh, a section subtitle and you want that to be smaller you can highlight it and make it smaller here or with it selected you could click down here this is the new um, create new paragraph style button you can click this and you'll see it's got a generic name paragraph style one I'm gonna double click that and change this to section subtitle this is just to show you how this is possible you don't have to do this but now this is part of section subtitle it looks the exact same as section title you can see which over here watch how this changes wherever I click that's what's highlighted um, I'm gonna right click and edit this and change under basic character formats I'm gonna change this to 18 Hit OK and you can see it made this a little bit smaller another thing I could do and so you know to control the spacing here is uh, space before under indents and spacing 
And because I have this preview box selected, if I make um, changes here, I can see it reflect over on the left. And let's say I want that, that much space. By doing it this way, putting a quarter inch space here, then every time I do a, a, a section title and section subtitle, the spacing will be the same throughout the whole document. So very useful stuff. All right, so I've done this chapter. I'm going to do one more just, um, just so you can see how this goes. I'm going to click right here with my uh, number. And under Paragraph Styles, I'm going to do Chapter Number. Um, for this, I have this Bullets, which is a centered style. I'm going to use that. The reason you don't want to just click up here to center it is notice it's not really centered, it's to the right a little bit because your normal style has this first line indent. So you don't want to just center manually like that. You want to use a style. And that way, if you if you want to make a change to everything that's centered, you can just change this one style. You don't have to go back and find it all again. So it's very important to use your paragraph styles and not do things manually. Three returns there. Next row in here. Now, this is really important to see because if you start, um, let me show you what happens when I click in here and make this a drop cap. Because I started this line with dialogue, what's getting drop cap, the first character is a qu quotation mark. That doesn't look right. Now, it's a really quick uh, fix to do this. And all you have to do is stay in this paragraph. And you'll notice right now, like I showed you before, it's only doing one character just change that to two characters, okay? Now, I don't like that this is still really big. And I can change this manually by going over here and, and making this a smaller size. And and then I can change the, um, if I make this small, look, watch how it moves down to the baseline. And then I can change the height of this manually so that it comes up here and matches. But doing things manually not why we have uh, InDesign. With this uh, highlighted, I go to Character Styles, and I've created this quote mark character style, which clicking on that just does the same thing I did manually, but it does it in two clicks. And since we're going to run into this again throughout the, um, throughout the book, um, the more you can simplify, the better. Matter of fact, I'm going to create a, another case right here so I can walk through that again. Um, first, let me show you, this chapter starts on a left-facing page. For my books, I like new chapters to start on right-facing pages. I, I just think it's a professional touch. So with the cursor to the left of that three, I'm going to right-click. I'm going to go to Insert Break Character, and I'm going to choose Odd Page Break. And that'll make sure that this page always starts on an odd page. Odd pages are on the right, even pages are on the left. So let me show you that again. The cursor's to the left of the three, right click, insert break character, odd page break, and that moves it over here. Under paragraph styles, I'm gonna change this to chapter number. Um, I'm not sure why it's doing that. Let's see. Yeah, it was grabbing a little bit of the style from before. Um, so, drop cap again, see what it did here. I'm just gonna change this to two. I'm gonna highlight the quote mark and under character styles, I'm gonna apply the quote mark style and that fixes this. All right, you, the first step. Now, this is, a, a, this is a system of multiple passes. The first thing you wanna do is do exactly what I've done here. You want to um, make sure all of your chapters start on the right-hand side um, get the, the styles correct um, for the chapter and the uh, first line here and do that through the entire document all the way down. I'm not going to make you watch that. I'm, I'm just showing you a few chapters and you, you just finish uh, the document yourself. Once you've done that, you're going to come back to the beginning and start your, um, your next line, your next round of edits. Now this time, what we're gonna look for are widows and orphans. And we have one right here. 
this is a line left by itself. It's not a, not a professional look. When you turn the page and you've got just this one line by itself. There are ways to do this automatically to keep a minimum of two lines together, but I think it causes more problems than it solves. So I'm going to show you how to fix these uh, quickly and, and manually. Um, for this one, so I'm going to hit escape or you can click this black arrow and that allows you to, to choose this box. If you're in the, see how I'm, I'm right now I'm editing font, I want to edit page elements, I need to hit the escape button uh, or click this black arrow and now I can choose this page frame, this frame that the text is in. Um, in order to have not have this line by itself, I can make this frame bigger and bring that line up or I can make it smaller and shoot these lines. See by dragging that up, now there's not room for that extra line so it went down here. It'd be easier to see if you can see both pages. So when I drag this up, look how it pops down to this size. So I'm going to do that. I'm also going to hit the down arrow key a few times just to make up for the, that space so it's not so obvious what we've done. If you go through your your favorite novels from big publishers, you'll notice discrepancies like this throughout the book because they've done this exact sort of thing. They've controlled um, individual pages to make sure that the uh, that you don't have lines like this. So not everything will line up across from page to page, and you don't notice that because each page looks because uh, you don't you don't make them uh, a big you don't make a big difference. Now, so that's one way of doing it by increasing or decreasing the size of that page, that text frame and then moving it. Another way to do it, and this is a good example here. See, I want this line to come and join the bottom here, and I could do the same thing I did before. I could increase the size of this box and shift it up. But there's a there's another way to do this and it requires, you know, you, you and you'll start seeing these things the more you do this, but if you'll notice with this paragraph, there's quite a bit of spacing between some of these words. This is uh, your kerning, the amount of space between words, and this is all flowing automatically. But you'll notice there's, this is not a very tight paragraph, and there's just this one word at the bottom by itself, this word apart, very apt. Um, I could tighten up the kerning of this uh, paragraph, and that's going to move this word apart up one line, which will shift all this up and bring this guy over. I know that sounds complex, but it's really simple. Highlight all of this. Your kerning is right here. Kerning is your left to right spacing. Remember, your letting over here is your up and down spacing, and you've got these up and down arrows, and here you've got left and right arrows. So I'm going to change the kerning and hit this down button. And you'll see it goes in 10 point increments, negative 10, negative 20, positive 10, positive 20. So I'm going to make it negative 10. And you see what that did. It, it brought the word apart up. This is still, it's not too tight. No one could, you could not possibly notice this, uh, this has happened. You'd have to really change the kerning quite a bit. Uh, for it to become obvious. But now we have that um, orphan line is now over here and the end of a page aligns with the end of a paragraph which is much more pleasing to the reader. I know this this might seem um, a little too de detail oriented but th this stuff is really important for how this page looks. These two pages look so much better than they did before with that single line here and that single line there. And believe it or not, it changes the reading experience. Um, if you can end, and I've rewritten uh, lines as I'm paginating to assist this, but if you can end a page, especially like a right-facing page here, if you can end it with a bit of dialogue and there's uh, some tension in that dialogue and the reader has to absorb that while they turn the page and start reading here, uh, it, can, it can change the reading experience. And you might want to you know, think about that as you're paginating. You really can um, heighten the reading experience by making um, small changes like that. Okay, so I'm going to go through the entire book now and make sure that I don't have any widows or orphans like that. And so I'm just scrolling down and looking for any anything amiss, where I only have one line or... Um, so these all look good. Up oh, here's my first issue. And the way to fix this will be 
because I've got a little extra space here, just drag this down and that line pops in right here. I'm gonna hit the up cursor key three times, maybe four times. And that just moves, shifts this up a little bit just to get this away from this page number so it's not too tight. So that all that looks great. And you'll just scroll through the whole, whole book like this. You've already gone through and done your um, pair, your chapter number and your drop cap. That's important because that changes the spacing. You know, when you when you change this drop cap and hit enter, that controls whether or not this line ends up here. That's why you want to do that first and do this stage next. For here, um, you know, how do I want to bring that up? I could add this or I could subtract it. I'm going to subtract it. I'm going to make this uh, text box smaller. I'm going to move this down a little bit. And then for right here, um, I have a place where I could tighten this paragraph, this line up, but that's going to create a problem with these two. And I don't have a place where I could fix that here. I could make this, this is a, um, because this is almost to the end here. If I increase the kerning of this um, paragraph, that's going to bump. See what happened? Because I knew if I just make the spacing a little more because there's the word planning is almost to the end of this line, it's going to bump this down one, which will knock this down for me. If you can do this through kerning, it's always better because then everything lines up side to side here. If you can't do it through kerning, you have to drag your text box a little bit. Um, now this is a, kind of an advanced case, but um, these three lines, this is fine, you can get away with this. It bothers me a little bit. I would rather have these lines appear uh, throughout the rest of this text and this next uh, chapter start right here. Um, I can leave it like this, I could be happy with this, but since it's only three lines, I could easily, instead of um, making this change the way I did by having this, um, changing this kerning and bringing this up, see which added that line, I can go up here and again, I made a decision here to um, to add to move this up and to bump this line down. I could do this the other way. I can drag this guy down. Make sure I've got my cursor. Drag this guy down and slide this up quite a bit. Again, you're not going to notice this. The reader's not going to notice because you've got this much space here. <clears throat> And what that did, instead of making decisions that bumped everything this way, it pulled everybody up. And now I've got, I've created this blank page for myself. And I can come up here and hit the delete key and bring that next chapter in. And I think that's a much better look than having those three lines all by themselves. Personal preference, it's up to you. You can um, change this how you like. Um, again, how, how detail oriented you want to be is, is just completely up to you. I'm looking, I'm just scrolling down, looking through all these. There's two lines together. Everything looks great. So I don't need to do anything. This one's a problem. I need to fix that. For this, I'm going to change the kerning of this um, paragraph. It took going to negative 20. I want to make sure I didn't create too much tightness there. I don't think so. It looks uh, it's perfectly legible. The words aren't crowding each other, and I got the result that I wanted down here. All right, here's one more. Um, this one's going to be an issue because if I bring this one line over, it's going to leave a line by itself. So it'd be better to bump this guy down. And here's another paragraph like we had before where you almost have it uh, to the next line. So I'm going to highlight that and increase the kerning. I want to make sure it's not obnoxiously kerned. You know, this is a little bit of extra spacing here. Um, there's other ways I could have handled this, but I think that's still uh, perfectly legible and doesn't call attention to itself. And we've got uh, a nice beginning and ending to these pages. All right, so that's four, um, four chapters. And of course, it goes a lot quicker when you're not, um, once you do it more and when you're not uh, explaining what you're doing as you do it. Um, so you can go through and do your entire document in probably just a couple of hours uh, 
first changing this style, doing your drop caps, then changing um, your kerning and your the size of your text box to make sure everything lines up. Now, you're going to come back to the very beginning and do one more pass. In this pass, you're going to make sure you get rid of elements that don't belong. You should not have a book title uh, above this chapter number. You certainly wouldn't want it up here on this page or a, chap or a page number down here. It's just not how professional books look. You wouldn't have your name on this page or this chapter or num page number or this. So you want to get rid of those things. And this, this is what distinguishes a really professional looking book versus one that's just slapped together. So how do we make these changes? You know, I've shown you how you can't edit this because this is done on your master pages. Well, you, what you can do is select which pages you want to override. And let me open up the uh, pages doc, uh, thing here. I want to show you if I'm, even though I'm looking at this page, you have to be careful which page is highlighted because that's the one you're gonna make changes to. This is page zero and one. If I click over here, let me get this black arrow. If I click here, you can see I'm editing this, but I still have these guys selected. It's very important when you make the, the change I'm getting ready to show you that you know what page you're making that change to. So right here, I want to, I, I can, there's two ways to do this. I can right click this page and click override all master page items, but also like this shortcut, control alt shift L. Again, you can do either one. If I, if I right click this and choose this option, override all master page items, you're gonna notice the dotted line around this has become solid. I can now highlight this and click delete. See this, I can edit this too. I don't want to, because I want that to stay there. So, but I like that shortcut of control alt shift L because you're gonna be doing this a lot. So it's good to know that. So if I scroll down here, I'm gonna click in this page to make sure I'm editing this page. I'm gonna hold control alt shift L as in llama. And as soon as I press that, now I can select these guys and delete them. So that's my next, and the reason Again, the reason we want to do this after we've made all these little changes is because you saw how when I made that change, I brought that um, pair, that chapter four up to this new page. So I wouldn't have known that that's a, a page that I'm going to delete things on and, and leave a chapter or pair, uh, page number on until after I've done that process. It's very important to do things in this order. So I'm going to click here to make sure I'm doing this one. Control Alt Shift L and delete this guy. Super easy. Control Alt Shift L, delete all these guys. You want to keep page numbers down here. You just don't want anything in the white space. All right. Now, you do that through the whole book, and you're almost you're almost done. It's that quick. One thing you're gonna find at the end after you've done all these changes to spacing is you're going to have blank pages down here or there's two options either because you've moved things up you're going to have all these blank pages see this is the first pages that that have text or you're going to find that you've moved things down and you don't have enough pages i'm going to show you how to fix both of those this is a very last um last step kind of thing so this is the last page that has text on it well it's it's very important to have this your, your last page in your document is going to be an even page. So you don't want the, the document to end right here. You want it to end with this page, 268. So to do that, I want to highlight 269. I'm going to left click it. I'm going to use my scroll wheel to go all the way down to the bottom. Shift, left click. And what I've done is I've, I've selected all those pages that I don't want. I'm going to right click any of them and go to delete pages. And now my book ends with this page 268 pages and again if this was a blank page control alt shift l you would have already done this because you've, you've gone through the whole book at this point but it's okay for it to end at a blank page you just want to make sure that you have this even page here um, that's because you start with an odd page so you want to have uh, the right number of pages going off to the printer they'll, they'll insert it blank page if you don't do this. It's just a good habit. 
to get into. Now, the other, the other thing that could have happened, and ignore what I'm doing here. I'm, I'm just deleting some pages. And the cool thing is I'm not deleting any of the content. I'm not deleting the um, text. I'm just deleting the spreads. Here's another option is that you got to the end and after changing all the spacing and you know because you're hitting enter when you create these chapters well now you don't have enough pages well we're in the same position we were when we started where you needed to flow this into a new page but you'll see you don't have a page to flow it into so let me show you how to fix that real quick under pages again you want to select the very last page you right click insert pages and you're just going to insert one page doesn't matter how much text you have. You just need that one extra page. And now, if you remember, this is this is how I have the template set up to begin with. So you have that one extra page. Now you can just click the plus, hold down shift, and click here. And it's going to auto flow, just like it did before. And now, so that's the two issues you could have, where you have extra pages at the end or not enough. And you can fix either one like that. I'm just going to add one more page so that it ends with this even page over here. Now your book is ready to go. You've gone through, you've, um, you've selected all of your text and made it all the font you wanted, the size you wanted. You, um, you did your chapter number in drop cap style. You've entered all this information in these pages. You filled all this out. It's ready to go. Um, maybe uh, something advanced you'd want to do, like this this box, you'd want that to be in the front of all of your sections. You can select this box by clicking on it, left clicking, and copy it, control C. And then down here, select this page, click here so that you're gonna paste it here and control alt shift v instead of just control v which would paste it someplace randomly i don't want to do that i want to control alt shift v and that's paste in place that'll paste it um, in the exact same orientation that it came from it's a very useful shortcut control alt shift v and one other thing i'll show you is you might want to add some um, art or pictures to your document it's very simple Go to File and Place, or you can Control D, but File and Place. And let's pick this guy. And I've got, see, I've got this, and I can place it anywhere. Now, don't freak out when you place this. It's going to be a much different size. That's totally okay. And don't try to resize this by grabbing this uh, box. Just like our text box, this is just a container. This box isn't the object itself. In order to resize that object, we need to go up here to Object, Transform, Scale. And then we want to choose the percentage that we trans, uh, transform this to. I'm going to do uh, 35%. And because of this preview button, I see that happen live. If I didn't like that while that's um, still being previewed, I could change this. You know, If I, if I wanted it bigger, whatever I wanted to do, I could change that while I'm still in here. Then hit OK. And now I can drop this guy in wherever I want. And don't worry about all these lines. None of that. None of these lines are going to print. It's just the stuff inside the boxes that print. And let's say instead of these hyphens or between these spaces, you wanted something fancy here. I can go uh, file place. Let's grab this shell. And again, object transform scale it's gonna remember my last setting but I can do something different for this one let's do 10% uh, and then if I get right outside this corner you see how it turns into that rotational selector and if I I can rotate it freely or I can hold down the shift key and that'll do it in 40 uh, 45 degree increments so let's maybe I'd want to you know, use this guy as a as a space between lines, or I can make it really small and replace those hyphens with it. Do one on either side. It's totally up to you. Just goes to show how you can insert your um, 
uh, pictures in here. All right, now, you've got everything how you want it. I'm going to um, create the PDF that we'll send to CreateSpace or Lightning Source, whoever you want to use. Um, I'm going to go up to File, Export, and the default is a PDF. I'm going to click Save. All the, all the um, basic uh, settings that I've got here in this template file are correct. If you're using an older version of um, InDesign, it might have an option for not printing um, blank pages. You want to make sure that's not selected. Otherwise, it's going to remove blank pages from your document and, and slide everything up to fill, and it creates a problem. But as long as you're using a, a, a recent version, all these settings are are perfect you don't have to change anything just click export and now in the background this is creating your PDF you're gonna to want to open the place that you save this to and find your PDF it's right here let's open this up and see how it looks um, show you a useful um, button in Adobe Reader is this one it gives you a one page and you can see how how nice this looks, how much depth that drop shadowed uh, box gives you. And hey, looks like a looks like a book, right? Really nice. Now, um, so th uh, this is something I'll have to fix because this came over and I didn't change this. Uh, I, I want this italicized and different font and all that. Um, all right, isn't that nice not to have anything up here? Now, one thing you'll notice is I go back and forth between these two pages, page two and page three, look how the text shifts from left to right. It's not centered on the page. That's not a mistake. This is part of the template. It's very important because this page is going to be on the left and part of this page is going to be down in the spine of the book. It's going to be lost. Part of this page is going to be lost on the other side, on the left side. So when you open the book, because some of this is lost as it curves down into the spine and there's some adhesive here and some of this is lost this is going to look centered and this is this is where you can see a poorly designed book where they've centered this page and when you open the book it no longer looks centered they didn't take the spine into account well that's all done for you don't have to mess with it i'm just pointing it out so that when you scroll through your book and these things are jumping around that you don't think that's a problem that's a that's a good thing that came out really nice. The drop caps look great. So next step would be to scroll through every single page. Look again for widows and orphans. Look for any issues. This this isn't your final PDF. You know, there's a blank page which is good to show that this didn't get cut off from the from the PDF export. We handled this nicely. So this is just your next proofing step. If you need to close this and go back into InDesign and make changes, I almost always have to do that. But, I mean, this is, and this is as far as I went. You can see, still a lot of work to do. Um, but, man, this, this looks like a, a great print edition. If you slap a nice cover on this puppy, um, I like the, the cream interior and the matte cover I think those look a lot better than the white interior looks like uh, you know it's printed at uh, a print store with the cream makes it look um, like a nice uh, um, professional book and the matte um, cover again is a great option that makes it look uh, nice and professional but even with what we've got here it didn't take that long to do you've got a beautiful uh, book you just take this PDF uh, upload it to uh, create space uh, with select your five by eight interior, or if you use the six by nine uh, template, select your size, select that cream, that mat, enter in all your information, and you're good to go. So that's it. Hope that was helpful. Uh, thanks for watching.